Potatoes are highland crops that grow well in most parts of Kenya, including Molo, Kinangop, Kiambu, Taita Hills, Yata, Timburoa, and parts of Laikipia. It is the second most important food crop after maize in Kenya, and it is cultivated by other 800,000 growers who are mostly smallholders. So what do you need to start potato farming? The first step is to find land in one of the high production areas. Currently, the cost of leasing a good chunk of land, for example in Molo, about 1 km from the tarmac, is 15,000 shillings per year. When picking a land to farm potatoes, remember, it should be easily accessible. Look for one with reddish soil. Avoid land with a bad history of potato production. Avoid land that lies adjacent to a river to minimize chances of frostbite. When it comes to varieties, you may be tempted to take a shortcut by buying seeds from other farmers, but you should know that this is the biggest mistake that most farmers make. Normally we advise farmers to take the certified seeds. Certified seeds mean the seeds that have been assessed and they have been proven to be of good quality in terms of the ability to germinate and ability to have no uh, diseases or pests. If you want to get the best harvest, then you have to use certified seeds. The most common types of Irish potatoes are red or white. The red varieties have a longer shelf life than the white, which have better cooking qualities and are mainly used in making fries. Unlike most other vegetables, Irish potatoes are not grown from seed. Instead, pieces from the potato itself start new plants. When selecting seeds, the seed potato contains buds or eyes that sprout and grow into plants. If the seed is too small, it will produce a weak plant and the seed piece must have at least one good eye. Cut the seed five or six days before planting and hold the cut seed in a well-ventilated spot so it can heal to prevent rotting when planted in cold, wet or very hot weather. There are over 50 seeds varieties available in Kenya but the most popular are Tigoni, Kenya Mavuno, Shangi, Sherekea and Asante. You can source these seeds from agricultural research centers such as the Kenya Agricultural Livestock and Research Organization. Now that you have the seeds, look for a nice piece of land that contains loamy or sandy loam soils that are well drained and aerated, rich in organic matter with a pH range of 5 to 6.5. It is advisable to do soil analysis after you have identified where to plant. This can be done at various agricultural research institutions. The crop does well in regions that receive a regular rainfall of between 850 mm to 1400 mm per annum. Now that you have your piece of land, it is important to know that, prior to planting, perennial weeds in the field should be controlled either by plowing or by applying the recommended herbicides. The farm should be plowed to a fine tilth and soil amendments like farmyard manure incorporated. Once the farm is ready, preferably at the own set of rains, furrows with a depth of at least 15 cm should be prepared and all the fertilizers required placed. The depth should be about 40 cm since potato roots can go deeper. It is important to note that fertilizers should be incorporated into the farrow prior to planting since the plants will require maximum nutrients level 21 days after germination as they start to form tubers. The best starters are seed potatoes from which eyes protrude. Use a clean, sharp paring knife to cut large potatoes into pieces that are roughly the size of a hen's egg and making sure that there are at least two eyes on each piece. 
If you're cutting up potato pieces for planting, do so one to two days ahead of planting. This will give them the chance to heal and form a protective layer over the cut surface, improving both moisture retention and rot resistance. 12 to 16 days after planting, when sprouts appear, use a hoe to gently fill in the trench with another 3 to 4 inches of soil, leaving a few inches of the plants exposed. Repeat in several weeks, leaving the soil mounded up to 4 to 5 inches above ground level. After the potato plants have emerged, add organic mulch between the rows to conserve moisture, help with weed control and cool the soil. So, how do you manage your crop after establishment? Serious crop management practices usually begin after germination, which is two weeks after planting, since it's at the stage that pests and diseases start to establish. Weeding manually or a second herbicide application can be done after planting in case there are weeds. This will ensure that germination of the potatoes will happen weed-free. Do not allow sunlight to fall on the tubers which develop under the surface of the soil or they will turn green. Do the healing in the morning when plants are at the tallest. During the heat of the day, plants start drooping. The last healing should be done before the potato plants bloom, when the plant is about 6 inches tall. Athing up around the base of the plant to cover the tubers as well as to support the plant. In case of water stress irrigation is required, soil moisture content should be maintained at relatively higher level in order to promote optimal production. In potato farming, pests and diseases are inevitable. Therefore, scouting for pests and diseases is very important during the vegetative phase of the crop. An example of the pest is the root knot nematodes, which are microscopic parasites living in the soil which feed on the roots. They infest the tubers resulting to the development of swellings, reducing the quality of potatoes. Cultural methods may minimize root knot nematode damage and practices such as removing the roots of each crop as soon as harvest is completed, followed by tilling the soil two to three times is very effective in reducing nematode levels. Sucking pests, especially aphids and white flies, are the top enemies of the crops because they spread viral diseases. Other pests include caterpillars, flea beetle and wireworm. For the control of flea beetle, it is important to keep populations low through crop rotation and by maintaining high soil organic matter. The aphids and caterpillars can be controlled by applying the recommended pesticides. And for the diseases, some that affect or attack the potatoes include late blight, phoraseum wilt and early blight. The most destructive diseases is potato blight. The disease affects both the leaves and the stems and once established and no control measures are taken, it can cause up to a 100% loss within 5 days. The affected parts will have dark water soaked lesions and after a few days, the whole plant surface appears as if the crop has been set on fire. Weekly spray regime with fungicides is effective in managing the disease and increasing yields. To manage this pests and diseases, use the recommended pesticides at the appropriate time, planting seed varieties that are tolerant and resistant to pests and diseases, early and timely planting, proper weed control and spacing. That has been infected by a disease has changed its state, it doesn't recover. That is true. Simply because plants have, if I go down to the system of the plant, it is not like human beings. The cells normally don't recover. 
because they have what we call the sessile cells, meaning the cells don't move. In human being, they're, um, the plant cells, they move. But the plant cells, they are just dormant. They don't move. So when there's an injury by a pest or a disease in the soil, or on the root, or the leaves, these are already an existing wound. It cannot recover. So if you're talking about uh, coriander, we are talking about potatoes, if they have been affected by the disease, definitely the, um, the, the disease will affect the plant, will affect the tissue. And the damage will be observed, of course, the whole lifetime of the plant. If, for example, a disease has affected a flower before forming a fruit, that damage will be observed when the fruit has grown because it's already affecting the system. When we talk about the diseases, there's something that you have to understand. My area is in molecular biology also. When there's a disease plant-disease interaction, it is in the cell whereby we have the DNA. So there are the two DNAs of the pathogen and the plant that are interacting with one another. So when we have a problem inside the plant cell, whereby the disease has affected, this will be portrayed in the whole process of that specific tissue that is developing. If it will develop into a fruit, into a leaf, into a root, into a stem, that wound will be observed. Yeah? So it doesn't recover. Although the plant tries to recover in some extent, if, for example, you cut a stem, you see there's a wound that was there, then it tries to recover. So that is what I would respond to a specific farmer who is asking the question of, does the plant recover? No, it doesn't recover. It just grows with the wound, tries to resist. It's from an academic angle, it's and this is, yeah? When you are at ease, you are relaxed. But when you are at ease, you are this eased. When you are underly, you are undone. You are in an underly state. But you are this undone. So this is a disease that destabilizes the physiological process of the plant. What are some of the physiological processes of a plant? Photosynthesis, whereby the plant manufactures its own food. Formation of the chlorophyll, which is very essential in trapping the light and generating energy. Process of uptake of nutrients from the soil, which is water, other mineral nutrients. Uh, the process of translation and transcription, whereby there are different, uh, it happens inside the soil, whereby there is uh, the building blocks of the plant, the proteins and enzymes and everything. All these processes are the ones that are affected by the disease or the pathogen that is affecting the plant. So how can a palmer then be able to identify some of these diseases when he has a crop in the field? First, before anything else, in management of diseases, there is what we call prediction. Yeah? You predict that there will be a disease in a farm. Prediction is you have to look at the factors that have to be in place so that the disease will exist. One of the factors is that there has to be a plant. Yeah? There has to be a plant. The plant has to be susceptible. Susceptible means the plant has to be ability to host the pathogen. Then number two, there has to be the environment. The environmental factors have to be optimal for the pathogen. There could be the pH, the water, the, 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 the water, there has to be the temperature, all these conditions have to be there, conducive for the disease. Then there has to be, uh, there has to be the pathogen. The pathogen should be able to, to, to infect the plant. So all these factors that the, the farmer has to look at so that he'll be able to predict. For example, if it rains now and it's sunny, we expect to find a foundry mildew in the greenhouse, for example. We expect to find downy mildew in the greenhouse because there is temperature and there is humidity. So those conditions. So if a farmer looks in the field and sees that okay, it has rained and there is the sun, I expect to find some diseases. That is number one. This is what we call the prophylaxis. Prophylaxis is by a farmer goes to the field and now during this period of the year there is a possibility of this disease. So you go ahead and apply a chemical. You apply a chemical because preventive is better than cure. So you prevent before this the onset of the disease. Now this is about now preventing the disease before it is in the field. And now when it comes to harvesting, potatoes are ready to harvest when the tops begin to die and the potato skin becomes firm. The skin is set when it does not scrape easily when rubbed with the thumb. Harvesting is done using a fork and the vines should be removed one to two weeks, digging up the tubers. When you are harvesting your potatoes, the injury that you cause to the potato, that means you have introduced 
a factor that is not within its, uh, it, the way it was. You have introduced a disorder first of all. And through that disorder, most likely the injury will be an avenue whereby the, 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 the disease or the disease causing organism will get into the plant system. So we make sure that you don't damage them. Another thing is you have to understand that this is a living uh, cell. And the living cell can always be affected. It can be infected by a, a disease. It can be eaten by a pest. So you need not to change its condition. That's why some of these uh, uh, crops like potatoes, you are advised to leave them buried on the ground. You cut off the upper part of the plant and leave them on the ground because definitely they will harden and then they will be not be damaged when you store them. After harvesting, tubers meant to be stored should be left in the soil in order to allow the skins to thicken, which prevents shrinkage due to water loss and storage pathogens. Potatoes need good air movement during storage to help keep them dry and cool and to supply fresh air. Washing of potatoes is discouraged as they tend to rot when stored. If potatoes have moist soil on them, the farmer should spread them out to dry for hardening their skin. Harvested potatoes should not be placed directly on the floor but placed on a raised surface or on dry grass. The storage unit should be kept completely dark so that the stored potatoes do not change to a green color. Another thing you have to consider is, there are what, is what you call the post-harvest diseases. Some of these diseases could be from the field or they could be when you are on transit or on storage. So how can you control all these things? The way to control all these things is by looking at the harvest indexes, the quality, the level of maturity, the size, and if there are any damages on the crop. So those are the factors that you have to consider so that you are able to avoid uh, the, 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 the presence of diseases in your harvested product. Another thing you have to look at is the triangle that I gave you or that triangle that I always tell my students or the farmers. And disease, for it to be present, there has to be the host. There has to be the environment which is conducive and there has to be the pathogen that is able to cause the disease. In a harvested product, these are the three things that you have to pray with. The environment, the environment includes the humidity, the moisture, the temperature. If these conditions are favorable for a disease, definitely, if there is one disease causing structure that comes into contact with your harvested product, you will have a disease because it will get into the plant, into a pro product, and then it causes damages. The for farmers who want to venture into potato farming, they should estimate the yield to be about 80 bags for one acre and these can be translated to about 320,000 Kenyan shillings per acre in three months, especially if one is able to do proper timing. Potatoes fetch the highest prices of about 4,000 a bag when they are in short supply, which is mainly in January and February. So, it's best to plant them for some time before December as the prices are lowest in July when the supply is in plenty. Agriculture is, is, is really interesting because, I mean, a plant, you put it on the ground, a seed in the ground, it germinates. So, just like the way you take care of your kind, yeah, if you are a farmer, the way you take care of your newborn baby, this is the way you take care of your tomato plant. Try to understand it because even the plants, they kind of a way communicate. When the plant is showing you the symptom, what is it doing? It is trying to tell you now, trust me, I'm going to have problems. I'm going to show you that I am going, I'm dying. And it just dies when you are there. So before it dies, try to do something, try to prevent. And even before planting, try to understand the conditions of your field and the conditions of the soil, the ecological conditions. And don't go by here, what people see, it is usually happens. Try to understand your field before setting in to uh, plant anything and always look for the knowledge and the truth. Note that the recommended size of potato bag is 110 kilograms according to the National Potato Council of Kenya.